Did you know that many of the exercises that are commonly prescribed for the most commonly sought out reasons are actually literally the opposite of what you need to be doing? We're gonna show you one example today and that's the glute bridge. Why would I wanna jam my hips forward and compress my lower back and compress my hips? I'm literally training to hurt my back and my hips if I do that. Look where you're driving the sled and drive it in a straight line. Your intent should be intense. This is the glute bridge. Something like this is usually prescribed to people, anyone from regular people who wanna get rid of back pain to athletes who need to strengthen their glutes for whatever purpose trainers are saying they need to strengthen their glutes. There are a lot of variations of this, from the version I just showed you, to doing single leg variations, to doing them with feet up on a bench, doing them with a barbell and loading up a whole bunch of weight. Whether you're doing this for general purposes, like to address back pain or hip pain, or you're doing it for athletic performance, it's the opposite of what you need to be doing. I'll show you three reasons why. First and the most obvious is you're lying down on your back. This is not an athletic position. It's also not a practical position for daily life. So let's say you are strengthening up your glutes. That doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna do anything for you when you're on your feet doing things that you actually need to be doing like walking up and down stairs without back pain, without knee pain. And I don't see how training like this is gonna translate to anything that I'm gonna do on a court or field or a track. Second is observe the position of one's feet when they do an exercise like this. Their feet are usually pretty wide apart. They're usually pointing out and they're usually driving weight into their heels because I don't see a lot of people performing glute bridges with their heels off the ground like this. They're always driving into their heels to the point that they're even sometimes elevating the front of their feet. So they're usually doing it like this, or at best like this, but the weight's still driving through the heels. If you're an athlete, you don't wanna be driving weight through your heels. Anybody has heard that even for runners, heel striking is bad. It is bad. You're not supposed to be absorbing force on your heel repetitively or at all. Your heel is just for rest. It has a purpose, but it's not for an athletic purpose. So doing exercises where you're driving pressure and driving your weight through the heels is not something that's gonna carry over for the everyday person or for the athlete. Third, the action that you're performing is this. That means you're driving your hips or your pelvis from back to forward. That is not an athletic movement and that's not a position or a movement pattern that you wanna be doing to cure back pain and hip pain because the root of back pain and hip pain is compression, which means shortening of everything. And when your problem to begin with is that your hips are compressed in a forward state from excessive sitting, you don't wanna be doing exercises that is reinforcing that. You're, if I did that movement standing up, it would be this. Why would I wanna jam my hips forward and compress my lower back and compress my hips. I'm literally training to hurt my back and my hips if I do that. As an athlete, there aren't any athletic movements where you're doing that movement either. If I want to run, my hips have to shoot back. If I want to jump, my hips have to shoot back. If I want to throw, my hips have to shoot back. If I want to punch, my hips have to shoot back. So the relationship of your pelvis to your ribs or tail to your head needs to be forward pitched. When you do something on the ground where you're jamming your hips into the forward position in front of your head, you're actually shortening your spine, which is bad for back pain and your training behavior that is not athletic. I said I was gonna give you three reasons why it's not good, but I'm gonna give you a fourth bonus reason. There's no actual intent. There's no practical intent behind that movement. You're just doing an arbitrary movement with no intent, which means you're kind of confusing your body. And this isn't talked about in training or exercise, but when we do movements or exercises, whatever you want to call them, we always try to keep it as practical as possible because your intent drives your movement behavior or the way your body 
responds and behaves, the way your reflexes operate. So when we teach movements or exercises, we try to make the intent behind it realistic. If I'm gonna work with somebody on a throwing pattern, let's say, sometimes you'll have coaches that just start focusing on all the techniques of how to throw, but you forgot that the whole reason you're throwing in the first place is to hit a target or whatever the intent is behind that movement. So when you remove the intent and you start just focusing on the technique, you're kind of losing the realisticness, for lack of a better word, behind what you're doing. And just lying on your back and thrusting your hips up in the air, what are you doing is my question. What is the intent behind that? It's just an arbitrary movement. So the obvious question is, what should I do instead? Just one basic thing that'll accomplish the same thing. I'll show you a version that you could do if you're using it just to decompress your spine and your hips to relieve lower back or hip pain, like it's often prescribed for. And I'll also show you a variation of it for athletes, one where you can load up and strengthen the engine behind your movement so that you can be a more powerful athlete. So the first problem I said with the glute bridge is you're lying on your back. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do something on our feet standing up that's actually gonna transfer to something. The second thing is your feet were not in an optimal practical position in the glute bridge. You're typically driving it through the heels. When you're walking around, running, or, do, or going up, the, up and down the stairs or doing activities in everyday life, you shouldn't be relying on the heel to absorb pressure. It should be more the pads of your feet, the balls of your feet. We're gonna point our feet straight, be on the balls of our feet. So even if you wanna have your heels kind of down at the start, you wanna be super light on your heels. The majority of the pressure should be on the springy parts of your feet, okay? The pads of your feet. Lastly, instead of driving the hips forward, which was the third thing I said, which is compressing your spine, we want to decompress the spine and make it as long as possible. So we're gonna drive the hips back and the head forward. So we're gonna use a wall to get into that position. And you're gonna have an intent, which is to basically push the wall away from your hips and create as much space between the two as possible. So you're gonna look straight at the wall. You're gonna be on the springy part of your foot. That's gonna translate to running and try to actively create as much space between the wall and your hips as possible by not letting your feet budge and by pushing it away. Don't look down and back at your feet. Keep your head up and look straight ahead at the wall and drive as far as you can. By driving into the wall like that and by not letting your feet budge and staying on the strong part of your feet, you are creating like an isometric tension in your whole body that's also helping to connect your whole structure as a unity. You're creating like a tensional integrity, like a rubber band that's gonna give you strength, but also decompress your system at the same time. If you're an athlete and you're doing this for more performance purposes, you can take that same intent and that same behavior and translate it to something dynamic, which would be pushing an object using your body to drive an object forward. A sled, but you don't have to have a sled. You can be creative and use anything. Put a car in neutral, go to a parking lot and push it. I used to take, we have these barrels here. I didn't have a sled, so I would fill this up with as much water as needed to give it the amount of weight that I needed. Right now it's just empty, but you can do that and then drive it. It's just empty, so it's just flying, but you would get into the position and drive it forward. When you're doing that, remember to maintain the integrity of what you're trying to do. So don't drive it like this with your hips in a compressed position. Get your hips back. Don't be on your heels and don't have your feet crooked. Have your feet straight, point in the direction that you want to go and be on the springy pads of the foot and drive it with intent. So just like in the isometric version, drive with intent. So even if you're an athlete, you can still do this on the wall. You'll still get benefits from this. And you can go into a split stance. You can do it from a more of a squat stance. Whatever you're doing, make sure that you're doing it with ferocious intent. If you practice things with half-ass intent, then 
when you go into live situations like a sports game or you need to suddenly take off and run either to save yourself from something or to catch some catch a bus to catch your dog whatever it is if you've only practiced with half-ass intent and doing arbitrary kind of fake exercises then when it's time to do real things your body will try to do it but it won't have had the practice it won't really know how to do that optimally so when you're training or doing these exercises do things in a realistic and practical way and focus on doing them with one pointed intent. So if I'm pushing a sled, I'm not listening to headphones and just my mind is over here, I'm looking at somebody over there and I'm pushing the sled. Look where you're going, like if you're a defender chasing somebody down on a fast, pr on a fast break, your intent is one pointed. So in training, it should be one pointed. Look where you're driving the sled and drive it in a straight line. It doesn't mean you have to be going full speed, but your intent should be intense. It should be one pointed and focused and not dispersed all over the place. It's really about relaxed intensity and having a purpose behind your movement. Lastly, when in doubt, look to nature for the answers. We don't know better than nature. If you wanna know what is actually practical, realistic positions to be in, Look at animals. Sit. Ready? Ready? Good boy. Good boy. This is Blue Bridge position. He doesn't want to be in this position. He wants to immediately get up. See? And the position that he gets into, here, boy. Look. Look at the position that he's into. This is the wall push position. His haunches are back. His spine is decompressed. His head is forward. See? And he's happy like that. And and dad doesn't have any back pain, and I can guarantee you he's faster than any athlete out there. So train like the real athletes and don't listen to the quote unquote experts. Look to nature. I hope this is helpful to you. I hope it gave you some practical reasons why certain movements and exercises are better to do than others when you're trying to achieve a certain outcome. If this was helpful to you, let us know in the comments below. If you wanna know the difference between the common misconception of strength and the actual type of strength that you need as a human being and as an athlete to perform and have longevity in your performance, then make sure you keep an eye out for our next video that's gonna clarify the meaning of strength. Thanks for watching.